Salutations. You're listening to and you're watching, hopefully, here on Twitch, Star Wars Rebels Cast UK. Yes, it's an unconventional beginning because I'm taking over for Ali Kenobi, who's not with us right now. No, he's still with us. He's not on the show right now. He didn't die or anything, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but I got I got a replacement for him, his stand in. Uh are you are you a, a Padawan or a knight? Uh, what are you these days? Uh, I am I am registered as a Jedi in this country, so I am a Jedi. So Je- <laughs> Jedi, Urquhart, Andy Jedi Urquhart. Urquhart yes. yeah. do, you prefer, do you prefer Andy or or Jedi Urquhart? Is, do you have any fun nicknames we could use the show? Uh, no, I just call me Andy. <laughs> I don't have a Star Wars nickname, unfortunately. But uh, I'm Master Yogi, aka Yogi Zilla, and uh, that's the, that, Ali gave me that name. I, I don't have a ego maniacal complex or anything going on. I don't consider myself a master. I'm actually quite more Padawan status these days in my Star Wars knowledge. <laughs> uh, that's just interesting. I was talking to Ali. I actually talk, talked to him briefly on Skype earlier, and we were having a discussion about the classic uh, Star Wars. I guess we might, might as well start off with that before we get into the main discussion tonight. Uh, this is going to be a special show, by the way. We're going to talk a, a lot about Star Wars Battlefront, and it's going to be a lot of banter as well, because Ali's not here to keep me in line. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but actually, before we get into that, you know, uh, what you been up to, man, since uh, yesterday? (laughs) Since yesterday, uh, I I went to work and I came home and I watched I watched Flash, and and what else did I watch? I can't remember. I watched something else, but I did watch the Flash today, which was awesome. Well, that's why Flash comes out on Tuesdays, doesn't it? Mm -hmm, Yeah, I gotta watch. Oh, I watched. I watched Agents of Shield as well, obviously. Yeah, I gotta catch up on both of those. Yeah, uh, but I'll 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 be discussing Agents of Shield at length in in, in a couple of hours, so I don't want to go into that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's fine. Uh, but yeah, Agents of Shield cast. Make sure you catch that on AllGames.com, and you could Google it. They got a Twitter feed and all that good stuff. Um, I think yeah, I also I think I syndicate you get your show on uh on the Geeky Antics podcast feed too. If not, yeah, I gotta do cool. that. <laughs> yeah, I know uh, Chip had asked me to do that with uh, the B-Team podcast, another mm. great show to listen to. We're going to plug everybody right now. It's the top of the hour. <laughs> cool, yeah. So, yeah, it was actually, re- I had a lot of, uh, I had a really good time uh, on 42 Level 1 yesterday. Well, last night for you, yesterday afternoon for me. It was, it's always weird uh, doing a podcast before 7 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> I feel like it. I don't know. For, it's, it's so quite in, for you on here. Yeah, it's, it's it's so ingrained to me for podcasts to be uh, an evening event, just because uh, you know with family and work, that's is prone to interruptions. You, you heard my dogs; they were going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm surprised the kids didn't come and asking for something or some other thing blowing up. It was actually <laughs> rather tame for the time that it was uh, yesterday, but we we had a good time. We didn't get into Battlefront as, th- as much as I thought we would, so I think we'll make up for that today. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a p- push, for, push for time, as we always are on uh, on 42. But, you know, it's funny, but we always talk about it because uh, me, it used to be me, Ali, and like three other guys on the show. So there used to be five of us on the show, and we used to talk like about video games, and we managed to squeeze in what we were, what we were playing and everything and do all the news and cover all the new releases as well every single week and we sometimes like we're under two hours and now we are it's just me and ali most weeks and we are pushing two and a half hours and quite often have to do an after show like off of, off uh 
off the live broadcast to uh, talk about other things that we need to talk about on the show. So we end up doing like three and four hour shows. So I don't know how the hell we manage it. <laughs> yeah, I usually end up just catching you guys uh, on uh, on the on the record the recorded uh, feed mm. on uh, iTunes. Actually, I usually I prefer Stitcher personally. Uh, yeah, I, I use Stitcher as well. Do you know why I like Stitcher? Because it keeps track of how many hours of podcasting I've listened to on it. Yeah, does it? That that silly little number gets me so excited. <laughs> yeah, because it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Like my, what is mine at now? It's uh, yeah, uh, total listening time is two thousand two hundred and thirty-six hours. That's about where I'm at too. I think on on Stitcher since uh, two thousand. I only started listening like three years ago. Pretty much when we started forty two. That's like just got into all the podcasts. But yeah, two thousand hours. Another one I would recommend is Player FM. I'm trying to get myself to use Player FM more, but because um, some people don't like Stitcher, a few people don't like Stitcher. Hey, you guys are gonna get some podcasting behind the scenes here. But some people don't like P- Stitcher because they they feel that the quality of the audio is not as good. Because what they do is that they mirror your feed and then they they, they mm, yeah. do their own compression. That's why it, yeah. Stitcher actually streams pretty smoothly. You know, you could run it in the background on a phone or a tablet and do something mm, yeah. else. Uh, other other podcasting apps like uh, TuneIn Radio and Player FM are not as good at at doing that because they stream at a higher quality and it tends to become mm. resource intensive, I guess. Um, but it, Stitcher is good at that side. But some people don't like the fact that since Stitcher copies your feed, you don't get mm. credit for all the listens you get on the Stitcher. It's an independent feed. It becomes but that's a good yeah, thing too. It's- you do you can track that those metrics though within Stitcher itself. Yeah, but people like their numbers all aggregated. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> they like to look yeah. at, at you know feed burner or Podbean or Podomatic mm, yeah. and have all those numbers in one place. You know, uh, so I, I I could appreciate that, but I think it's good because I think Stitcher is one of the most convenient apps for for that. And now they have Stitcher yeah, support. Definitely. I think Stitcher and TuneIn Radio are both on Xbox One, so that gets that's that's exciting. Are, are they on PS4? Oh, um, Stitcher's definitely not on PS4, no. I'm um, not sure about TuneIn Radio. I know TuneIn's on the Vita. Ah, so that's, that's cool. Because uh, really I downloaded cool. it and, and I found 42 in it. And I was like, whoa, we're here, Ali. Look. <laughs> Can you keep it in the background while you play a game, too? I don't think so, man. Like, the oh. Vita's not very good at doing things like that. Yeah, I mean, that's expected too much. I, it's, I mean, it's impressive that it could play PS3 games like... Uh... Doesn't it, like, the first game that came out in the Vita, wasn't it, uh, what are Nathan Drake games? The... Yeah, 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 Uncharted Golden Abyss. Yeah, so that's pretty, that's a pretty impressive feat. Yeah, <laughs> you, definitely. I like how you, your hesitation is like, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I know, I, it's just, I, I've played, I've played that game, like, uh, a few times through now. It's a good game, like, it's worth playing if you have a Vita. But it's uh, it's kind of old now, and uh, it was free for so long that everyone must have it. <laughs> mm. But the that new uh, the PlayStation uh, what is it PlayStation Now that 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 kind of is breathing new mm. uh, life into your Vita, isn't it? I hope so. Like uh, we'll, we'll see how much I actually use it. <laughs> it's probably going to be one of these things that I will never use. The <laughs> shame. Mm. Sony has to have very good luck with platforms. The PlayStation no, is an I exception. Think, <laughs> mm, I think if they'd had that, like that blue, uh, I, I know we're derailing slightly here, but I think if we had that uh, PS Now at the launch of the Vita, like it would have been much more widely adopted. Like play your PS3 games on your Vita. Boom, there you go. Yeah, Pay how much subscription? How much built-in memory does the Vita come with? Um, none on the original Vita. <laughs> oh my goodness! So you had to like pop a memory card in there. Yeah, a proprietary memory card as well. Yeah, Sorry, micro SD or anything like that, and uh, for a for a sixty four gig card over here, it costs about seventy pounds to buy Jesus, one. That's crazy. And that's like buying it through Amazon, and that's buying it through an import on Amazon from like uh, Japan because they never released a sixty four four gig one here. But that's insane to pay for a memory card because I can buy an external hard drive for that is a terabyte for like fifty quid. You know. <laughs> I think Microsoft and Sony have both been guilty of that, but I find Sony is far more guilty guiltier mm-hmm. of like doing proprietary tech and forcing you to use their their uh, storage media and accessories. Ah, oh, such a pisser. Mm-hmm, definitely. <sighs> but anyway, uh, what what you been playing since then? Did you get to play anything since we uh, did the show? 
Um, I did. I did, well, I did play some Super Meat Boy, which I've never played before. But playing that on my Vita is really fun. Well, you play more of it. I, I never played it before. Like I played it for the first time today. First I thought, today. I um, thought you played it yesterday. You know, no, it was Jam that was talking about it. Oh, so he sold you on it. Yeah, yeah, he definitely sold me on it, and uh, I, I really like it. Like, I know you have complaints about the music and stuff like that, but yeah, I think the music's pretty, pretty decent. <laughs> I've not, I don't know what the original was all like, but the music's fine. It's not really a game that's about the music, but... Yeah, that's right, because he's the platforming uh, junkie. Mm, yep. Uh, did you ever get into N+, by the way? No, nah, I never played N+, no. I, I dare say it'll pop up in a Humble Bundle one day. If it does, I I still think that game holds up so well. It's so it's minimalistic, but there's so much replay value because of the user generated mm. content, and then the the levels that come with it are just so well designed. Uh, mm. It's it's fun. It's like it's all about like parkour. You know, it's uh, wall climbing and wall jumping and sliding and quick reflexes and you know you have a variable jump so you can control how high you jump or how how quickly okay. you start falling down so like you have to press that jump just right to make certain jumps mm -hmm. i mean the game's <laughs> crazy like uh the landmines all over the place so there's lasers and uh, homing missiles and you're dodging all this stuff like a little ninja and, mm -hmm. and if you get hit like little uh pixelated gibbs fly all over the place it's great <laughs> did uh, did you ever play um Tenersha? That sounds really familiar. What platform was that on? It's on Steam. Just came out like uh, a few weeks ago, man. I've heard of it. I haven't played that yet. It, it's really cool. Like you play as like this little robot in space, and you have you don't have a conventional jump button. You have to sort of fire rockets at the uh, the scenery to move around. But like the it's one of those kind of one more time hard type platformers. Like it kind of works a little bit like like what Meat Boy does. Like it's difficult, but once you work out how to do it. You can do it, and you can do it. Then you can retry and do it faster and faster to beat your friends' scores and stuff like that. But it's it's a really cool little game, really cool one. The worth, worth, worth keeping an eye out for in the in the sales if you're into kind of hard platformers. Now does Meat Boy? I don't remember. Does Super Meat Boy have? I know it has social scoreboards, and that's their online feature. But does it have co-op or versus modes in there? Uh, I don't think so. Not that I've uh, I've noticed as of yet. I've just been playing through the sort of the story mode type levels. Well, N plus has that. So throw that out mm. there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with that game. I don't know. It's one of my, <laughs> it's one of my favorite games of last gen. Uh, at least uh, one of my favorite arcade games. Mm. It's like it's a good uh, palate cleanser, shall we say? <laughs> now, I, uh, a little birdie and uh, told me that. Uh, you had downloaded Hearthstone, but you haven't played it yet. Yeah, I did download Hearthstone, like, because uh, my wife plays Hearthstone every day, like literally every day on on her phone. She goes and does her quests and and stuff like that. And she plays it all the time. Wait, and it I took you this long to get into it yourself? But well, I did download it um on my last PC, um, and she did play it on that but the frame rate was just horrible because i was running like a piece of shit graphics card and uh, i only had two gig of ram and now i've got oh, a nice, wow. nice shiny and now, now i have a nice shiny pc with 16 gig of ram and a decent graphics card <laughs> so i can now run games with decent frame rate and uh yeah so i've downloaded that mostly for autoplay but i'm definitely gonna uh, gonna check it out because i do like all the blizzard games that i've played but especially starcraft like starcraft is is my jam although i'm not I'm apparently not very good at it in comparison to uh, some of the other players out there. <laughs> we need to play some of the uh, custom maps on there. Because, like, I don't really play that much of the regular RTS. Like, um, one of my favorite games Blizzard has ever made is Warcraft 3. Because that's where uh, Dota mm -hmm. got started and a lot of other games got inspired. Because uh, that, that, the level editor in there is so good that people made mm -hmm. completely new games inside of the Warcraft 3 ecosystem. Like a yeah. lot of tower defense games and Mario Party type games, and it's it's crazy. There's like thousands of, of mods out there. Uh, there's even a, like a Silent Hill survival game. There's a oh, nice. They have a Jurassic Park survival game, Night in the Living Dead survival game. They got a a bunch of Final Fantasy open RPGs where it's like a huge world you have to explore and it's randomized. It's crazy. But mm. StarCraft Two finally ported over a lot of the assets from Warcraft Three. 
and I have yet to go back there and check out which customs they've ported it over. And that that's that's where the real fun starts, man. Yeah, do you know now that you're saying that, I do remember playing like custom maps on StarCraft One back in the day. Like years and years ago. Like downloading these maps that people had made and they were like they were much better than the regular maps. Yeah, I think so. And the back on Star original StarCraft they had limited uh that I like, like the scripting language was limited, it didn't have as mm. many triggers mm. and like behaviors, so they couldn't get so complex. But now with like Warcraft three and StarCraft two engines, the stuff they could do is ridiculous. Mm. So we need we check that out. We have to do a play date sometime. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but uh, but Hearthstone highly recommend it. That's like the one game that even when on the weeks that I don't really get to do much gaming, that's like the one game that's consistent because I'll go on a smoke break or, you know, sit on the, on the throne, as you say, and <laughs> play Hearthstone. Ever since it's got mobile, it's made it even easier. Yeah. But don't let people fool you. That They'll tell you that it's a, it's a dumbed-down Magic the Gathering or just a dumbed-down mm -hmm. TCG. It's really complex. The thing about it, it's really easy to get into, but it'll take you forever to master it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... And they don't overcomplicate things like like magic does, because Jesus, the flavor text on magic is like a mini novel each time. Yeah, I've never played magic, so I <laughs> I tried to avoid it because I, I know I knew a lot of people that got into it like really hardcore, and I steered clear of that because it looked like a money pit. Like I mean, original magic, the actual card game. Yeah, and I love I love magic, but it is a, a money pit. It, whether mm -hmm. you play digital or. Uh, physical it's it's crazy but uh so yeah that's a, we have it seems like we haven't played too much uh i thought i thought about definitely not since yesterday <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah uh battlefront beta uh, they took it down boo i'm still bitter boo. about that <laughs> who takes it down in the morning like really come on <laughs> did um you want to you want to get into talking about that now yeah might as well let's say let's yeah. segue right into it so I, I did have one question for you. Did you get a chance to check it out on the PC as well, man? I've seen gameplay, but I didn't get to play it myself. I, I just didn't want to get overwhelmed because <laughs> I got so into the mm. Xbox. But uh, Do you know, I did download it on my PC, but I never got around to actually booting it up. Um, I mean, it looks better. Anytime, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anytime when I wanted to play it, I was like, oh, I'll just play it on on my PS4, and I, I can hop in a party with with like Fraser or that. But yeah, I never got around to uh, to playing it on on the PC. I was just curious to what the servers and things were like on on PC. I've heard there was a lot more cheating, and from what I saw, it looked like there was a lot more cheating and glitches on the PC side. Mm. Um, I didn't notice that on the on the console. Uh, I was playing Xbox One. I didn't notice that till towards the end. There were people like map hacking, or I don't know if it was that or if it was just glitching out. But supposedly mm. there were people trying to cheat and. It was causing all kind of weird things. Like I kept falling through the ground, and then I guess I, re right. I, I reckon people thought I was cheating because I was shooting through the ground, but I was literally trapped <laughs> under the ground, and, and the only way I, I could get out is by using a jetpack, <laughs> yeah. jump, the jump pack rather. So hmm. It was pretty awkward because sometimes you would try to jump out of it, and it wouldn't jump out. So you had to <laughs> try like waiting for the cooldown to to recharge, and then try mm. it again and get the right angle so you could get on top of the ground and hit something solid. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. But you know, beta is beta, so some people really like took that as a bad sign. I, mm. I don't think that's gonna sh be in the shipping product. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, as a beta, you know, you're playing a game that is not finished. Like people that complain about uh, like things like that. I, I know, I know, we're mentioning it here, but like we're not like complaining about it. Going like, oh, this game is broken to all hell. It's a beta, you know. Like you're testing the game for the developers so that they can iron out all the bugs before it launches. Yeah, exactly, and that stuff like that is probably something simple. Like they have to tweak the collision detection so that yeah. it knows, you know, hey, this is solid. Don't you can't go through this for no reason, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, or have some kind of like routine where it, it makes you unstuck, you know. And that's mm. that's the thing we see in lots of games, um, especially MMOs. You know, like you get stuck in a wall somehow. It's like I'm stuck. Okay, let's take you out of there. Done. You know, yeah, that's an yeah, easy that's, fix. That's like some games have that where they've got like a button in the pause menu where you pause the game and it's like a sort of re recalibrate your position type button. Yeah, exactly. It never in uh, will happen. Yeah. 
Mm. And never winter, it's uh, I'm stuck. <laughs> you <hit that. laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the that, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I really have to speak to. I think we need to speak to the whole thing. There's a sentiment going around that you know, Battlefront, like before the game even came out, people were saying, "Oh, it's just going to be a Battlefield reskin." And then there were people still holding on to that belief after it came out, and it, it really got under my skin because this game, with just uh, three modes and three maps to play in the beta offered a lot of unique mechanics. I mean, there's similarities to games. It's undeniable, undeniable but, you know, that's just the way the industry is now. There's the, nothing really completely revolutionary coming out right now. That's, that's a sad thing. Yeah. Then when it does happen, people complain about it. It's like, eh, it's kind of weird. You know, people don't really want different. They say they do, but they're not ready for completely different things. But this is yeah. a fresh experience, right? I mean, would you agree? Uh, as, in, as in, like, uh, I would say that it's fresh in terms of like the first person shooter genre but it definitely did give me the battlefront feeling like because i played a lot of battlefront 2 uh, back in the ps2 era and it definitely captured that sort of feeling so i mean to, it's not quite 100 percent fresh but it is a fresh take on like the battlefront style of gameplay and I don't think um, I've played a lot of first person shooters in the last few years. It doesn't feel like any of the ones that I've played any time recently. Like certainly, like I, I don't think these battlefield comparisons are accurate at all. Like I was a hundred percent disagree with anybody that's that's saying like, oh, it's just a battlefront, a battlefield reskin. Yeah, and the way I look at it, like um, Call of Duty Black Ops Three is coming out soon. Actually, I think mm -hmm. the same day the Battlefront is. Yeah. And I'm not even, I don't have even having that on my radar. If I have to choose one or the other, it's Battlefront all the way. A hundred percent, mate, me too. Like, yeah, I have absolutely no interest in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Like, I I played back Black Ops 1 and hated it. Didn't bother to ever pick up 2. And last year's Call of Duty, I did get it. Um, mainly because we got sent two review copies of it for 42 by accident <laughs> and Ali sent one <laughs> up to me uh, and I did enjoy it like the, the multiplayer modes the campaign was broken but yeah, like uh, the campaign mode I, I got to like I don't know the fourth or fifth mission and it wouldn't let me get past the cutscene ever what? Like, I, I've tried to do it like 10 times and like it just craps out at the cutscene so the only way for me to do it is to delete my whole save file and play the game again and I'm not going to do that again Wow, that's really borked. <laughs> I've yeah, never heard that. Like, Battlefield 4 did it, actually did that for me as well. Like, it deleted my campaign save file six times. Wait, <laughs> that happened? Okay, that was, I thought that was just me. That happened to me too. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's a known it's... bug. It, that happened to me recently. Like, I played the campaign, mm -hmm. like, a couple months ago through EA Access, and it deleted my campaign, and I was like, okay, yeah. well... Yeah, huh. I mean, and like I played it on PS4, and exact same thing happened to me. It seems to be like when they do s stuff to this online server, it seems to bork that. It's weird because it's like my character online progress is always still saved, and I'm still the same level, and I've still got all the same unlocks. But like when when you go back into it, all the stuff is like as if you've just started playing the game for the first time, and it's telling you like, oh, press uh, press square to deploy, and it's like coming up with a wee flash box. So uh, yeah, so I hope that doesn't happen with. Uh, with Battlefront, but I have faith now that they've pretty much dropped uh, Battle, uh, Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline that those are finished with. It. They're hopefully now focusing <laughs> purely on Battlefront. Ah, uh, Hardline. The game that should not even have existed. Yeah, that game is just a Battlefield skin. <laughs> like, I can understand people saying that about that game, yes. Uh, that should have been like a DLC pack for Battlefield 4, 100%. But like Battlefront, no, definitely not. Like it feels, Battlefront feels a lot faster. Or even when you're moving around as the uh, playing as your character, the game feels faster. Like you feel like you're running faster. You've got totally different like gun sets as well. Like these are the Star Wars guns, like the laser guns and uh, like the blasters and stuff like that. That you recognize these from the Star Wars universe. They've got the all the noises in there. The, it's nothing like. Uh, like Battlefield at all with all these rocket launchers and sniper rifles and, and you do have like sniper rifles and stuff but they're it's very very different from Battlefield and it's a much faster paced game I would say than Battlefield like Battlefield you're kind of playing the long game and this you seem to be playing more of the short game 
which kind of makes it more like Call of Duty, but not really. It's kind of somewhere, sits somewhere in between the two. And there's a lot less vehicles in uh, Battlefront, certainly in the modes that uh, that we were able to play in the beta. A lot less vehicles than, than Battlefront. Uh, Battlefield. <laughs> this is really annoying. Well, it is. Battlefront. <laughs> Man, you just, you just hit on so many different good points. Uh, all right, so <laughs> let, let's keep the vehicle thing in our back pocket because you mentioned campaign. And I think that's something yeah. we need to address because there's no campaign in this. And some people are making a big stink about that, including our friends at the B-Team Podcast. They're like, there's no, there's no campaign. This shouldn't be a full-price game. And I kind of disagree. I'd rather have a fully fleshed-out multiplayer game than a game that has campaign and multiplayer, and neither one of them is remarkable. Yep, and Call of Duty Black Ops 3 has no campaign on Xbox 360 and PS3 this year like the campaign has been deleted from it because uh it won't fit on the disc basically <laughs> and they've only got the multiplayer on the last gen versions and the next year the, the current gen versions have got the campaign but apparently uh, it's like a level select so and all the levels are unlocked from the beginning so you could literally go to the last level play the last level if you wanted well see i, I can see uh, in that scenario really mm. that's, that's cool but i can see on that scenario where people be upset because they're you know the next gen people get everything and then the last gen people get only part of it, and they're paying the same price. So that that I can see how people be bitter about it. They should like you know consider mm. the <coughs> the price difference there. Excuse the me. Pro- it probably will. It probably will come out a wee bit cheaper. But but still, I think um with with, with that game, like the, a lot of people don't play the campaign at all ever. Yeah, like to me, like I'm mostly a, a multiplayer gamer. I, I mean, I like single player experiences. I, I like a game with a good narrative, but I mainly for me gaming is a good is just a way for me to catch up with friends because I get so busy. I, mm-hmm. I don't get to play games nearly as much as I would like these days. So I go mm-hmm. online, I you know fire up my Xbox One or my PC, and I play an online game to catch up with my friends and and have fun. That's it, you know. Yeah, to to bring it back to like what you're saying about about Star Wars, the uh, like Battlefront uh, people that are complaining about it not having a campaign, right? They are obviously forgetting that the original game did not have a campaign either. It was just like missions that were strung together. Just it was not like a campaign. There was no like. And like, this and this has the missions. Class. The missions yeah, and are this here. Has the exact same in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you just you can play them co-op with with somebody on. Uh, I think yeah, you can play on the couch, like either on the couch yep. or play it online with, uh, uh, with online with online or local two player co-op and i played the survival aspect of the missions area yeah. and i loved it i could see myself playing that because it had like aspects of like gears of war horde mode which i'm a big fan yeah. of and it had a little bit like tower defense in there like putting down turrets and stuff and i thought that was yeah. brilliant so i don't know i think people had really high expectations i mean i know it's easy to hate on ea and if there's anything we have to worry about, I mean, yesterday I said I'd be happy if every mode has three maps. I was really tempering my expectations because they already announced, what, a $50 uh, map pack and a season pass. Mm. So I wonder how much they're going to take away from the re- the shipping, the, you know, the release product, you know, that actually ships. And then later on, they'll release it as something that's brand new, which is stuff they probably already had developed long ago. You know what I mean? Like, it could have yeah, been an that- original product. Uh, that's the only issue that I have with yeah. it. Like that that season pass always bugs me. But I mean, I kind of expected it because it's EA. However, because it's like because they only just announced it like this week, and now the game's out in like what a month or so, I was a bit like, ah, oh, they should have announced this a while back. You know, especially because they're doing like their ultimate edition and stuff like that. And people have already pre-ordered this game, so they're gonna either cancel their pre-order or upgrade it or whatever to get that. Yeah. But I'm I'm not gonna buy that like dlc until it comes out like i might buy them the packs as they come out i will probably not buy the season pass though yeah i had bad luck with season passes the last few season Mm. passes i bought i ended up not playing the game enough to justify the purchase you know because my friends titanfall Titanfall maybe no not titanfall surprisingly (laughs) no 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 (laughs) That, that I, I dodged that bullet. I joined Titanfall, the de- Titanfall de- bandwagon a little late, but mm. uh, like Call of Duty and you know and Battlefield Three, I got the season passes and all that crap. And my friends stopped playing or they stopped playing as much, and I didn't really get to take advantage of it. So yeah, mm. I, I I I think it's 
you know, it's not a good deal, you know, prepaying for something that may not even come out. But we're not going to get into that. That's a whole other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a slippery slope right there, buddy. But, uh, you know. Yeah, but it's like, as, as far as the, like having no campaign, like, I paid full price for Star Wars Battlefront 2 on PS2. And all it had in it was co op, like, games like these uh, like hold mode type missions that you would go through there was not a story it was well, just there, there is a campaign against, yeah. i mean if you yeah, play it, was, it if you play it, it has cut scenes there's some semblance of the story it's just not really story they don't call it campaign you know what i mean like there's a yeah. single player experience the stuff you could play offline you know what i mean yeah. so if they want that single player experience it's there so I, I don't see the big deal it's like wham yeah, wham no, stop it but, <laughs> yeah, but call it like call it co-op mode, right? And so I paid full price for just the co-op mode, and I was more than happy with it. I played probably hundreds of hours of that game, and it was I had an awesome time playing it. One of my one of my favorite games of all time. This one has that mode basically in it, and it also has, uh, it also has a very comprehensive online mode. So the value for money for the main package is there. I'm happy enough with that. I think it could have had more maps. But obviously, they want to sell you the maps later as these DLC packs. So, but we don't know how many maps they have. I mean, the beta mm. made everything very elusive. How many maps do you think it's going to ship with for each each uh, mode? I think I think it's twelve in total. Twelve maps. I could I could be wrong there. I'm sure they did announce it though. Like how many maps are going to be? So that kind of aligns with what I said. Like three maps minimum per mode, because you have survival mode you had missions mm -hmm. um and i think survival and missions both take place in tatooine i'm not sure uh then you got uh walker assault uh cargo drop uh drew uh, droid run uh drop zone and i'm missing one. Oh, fighter squadron right is that everything mm -hmm. yeah oh and hero uh, mode hero mode hero, the hero mode yeah so that's a lot of a lot of variety you know i think they have a very complete product here but like I said, I, I think I think if twelve maps is reasonable to start off with, I mean I didn't yeah. I wasn't getting bored of, of Hoth at all. No, not at all. Like Hoth is a great map. The other the other map, um, I can't remember which what it was called, but I wasn't quite as keen on on the other map. But I think because Hoth is like so iconic, like you just kind of get into it and you're like, yeah, I'm in Star Wars here. And the other one is just like a generic brown trenches. You're like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I still find it weird that you said that because I, I actually like that level because of the. Yeah. It felt like a little bit of a labyrinth and it had so much cover mm -hmm. and so many different areas people could come from. I mean, I guess the aesthetic isn't that appealing because it's just a lot of brown and there's some red mm -hmm. here and there with the lava and stuff. But yeah, there wasn't enough. There wasn't enough variety in the, in the environment. But like in terms of like the, how it played, I liked it. Mm. But yeah, there, there are twelve maps at launch. I just had had a look there, and there's like Endor. It's gonna have an Endor map as well, which is cool. No, like Endor. <laughs> Those twelve maps. I wonder. Yeah, Endor. Oh, so you think it's gonna be Ewoks? I hope there's gonna be Ewoks. I don't think you get to play as an Ewok though, because that Gee. would just be a bit, you know, throwing the. <laughs> I wanna. I wanna play. I wanna be, have complete cause cast character customization i don't want to be generic asian or white guy you know or generic stormtrooper that's cool but I, you know why can't it be a twilight or a, a ewok you know <laughs> but well it was never it's never about that like you you're a part of you're just a guy that's in an, in an army like especially if you're a stormtrooper there's yeah, no yeah i know like you're just a stormtrooper you know you don't ha you don't have like a stormtrooper that wears pink boots and a yellow hat for funsies, though, there needs to be some. <laughs> there to be one mode at least where you can just have everybody can just like have all kinds of silly stuff. Like they can unlock like uh, different because uh, this cat we saw that they had the option to customize your character's look, but it, it wasn't unlocked in the in the beta. So I know they have something planned. So it's like, why can't I put a silly hat on? You know, or <laughs> you know, maybe I want to wear clown boots. Let let a brother live. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like I like yeah. the kind of stuff. It's just you know, it it, it gives you like a, it's like a it's like a meta game for me. Like I don't really care so much about. Have like, mm. if you feel like you had like little emblems, like that sort of thing. Like in in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, you could like design your own emblem. So like me and Fraser had like forty two level one badges all over our guns and backpacks and everything. Yeah, so, that's like, a fun too. Something like that. Yeah, that, like, that's I, cool. I would like that. 
Yeah, because like that keeps uh, little things like that. Like I don't care so much about achievements because some achievements are just stupid. Like they just if you play to get achievements unlocked, it sometimes breaks the gameplay experience. It makes it less fun. It's like mm -hmm. when you play Assassin's Creed and you try to get a hundred percent sync rate. When you play the missions the way they intend you to play them, it's like boring. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I like to just kind of just go around and rampage. So, so I, I don't know. I like the little unlockables when it's just a little fun extra stuff you can do on the side. You know, like the challenges. I really like how you have you can work on three challenges at a time. Same thing. That's the same model that uh, Hearthstone uses. Actually, a lot of games seem to use that model too. Now that I think about it, mm. but you know, you can have three challenges active at a time, and then when you complete them, a new challenge unlocks. And I, I think that's really cool. Like it gives you a constant sense, a sense of progression. Yeah, I, I always like those until you get three that are, like, really long-form ones that don't happen very often. Like, yeah, the game that I remember doing that the most was uh, Jetpack Joyride. <laughs> I love that name. I don't, know, I, I don't know if you ever played that, but it's a really cool little, like, free-to-play game. And uh, you had that where uh, you, had to, you had to, like, meet the certain objectives and stuff like that. And it did keep me playing the game a lot more to try and get those and get the because you got a star each time when you got the achievement and uh, then your stars added up to points and then you could unlock different stuff so it, i really like that sort of way of doing it and the unlocks in in uh, battlefront work really well i think definitely yeah. there was none of that in in the original battlefront yeah the card they, uh, the card system is pretty cool yeah they obviously need to add something like that to get the multiplayer crowd on board and to keep them playing like because you want to for this one especially if you're going to sell dlc packs to people you want people to get hooked on it and you want people to play it every day and put a lot of hours into it so doing something like that it was obviously going to happen and I, I think it seems to be it seems to fit with this sort of universe so i'm quite happy with that yeah I'm, i i love every every decision they made uh, with those little things like uh, having the power up scattered around the, the battlefield that encourages people to move around and, and hopefully mm -hmm. move around together so they cover each other. Um, the unlock I like that, that the credits are performance based, so it's less of a yep. grind. It's not like put it, play a, a lot of games and eventually you'll get enough credits. You know, that, that's not mm -hmm. a good model. I hate that. But if it's <laughs> performance based, you're less bitter. When your team loses, because at least you know you you know, hey, at least I did all right, <laughs> you know. And if you're the one that's, that's <laughs> making your team suck, then shame on you, and you don't get the credits. <laughs> so it works out both ways. Yep. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, by the way, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, uh, Ali was saying that the Ewoks are the original Jar Jar Binks. Mm, mm, no, I, I like the Ewoks. I, I do too. Always, always like the Ewoks. Uh, I don't. I don't like Jar Jar Binks at all. He's one of the worst characters ever created for anything. <laughs> um, but the the Ewoks, I, I always liked them. Like, uh, it's on the Jedi is, is is my favorite movie of the the Star Wars movies. And uh, I know people people will disagree with me vehemently, but but I, I always liked the Ewoks. I just remember like uh, I just remember them when I was wee, and like I've got a like a Teddy from when I was was a wee boy, and and his name is Ewok. And he looks like a little orange Ewok. Oh, that's awesome. No, I love, I'm <laughs> with you, dude. I, he wanted me to like give you a hard time, but I'm like, but I like the Ewoks. I mean, yeah. the Ewoks are useful and resourceful, and they have their own their own thriving society. Jar Jar Binks is like an isolated character that we've never seen any other of his kind, have we? I can't even think of it. Like, yeah, they went to his. Uh, they went to his what the underground, uh, the underwater. Oh, they did. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck, what was it called? Remember, it was. Uh, it was on Naboo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I but forget. Like, but remember, there was the the big fat guy on the throne. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I forgot all about that. <laughs> but still, like, it felt so shoehorned in. You know what I mean? Like, they mm. just threw him in there. Like the Ewoks feel like they really belong. Jar Jar Binks is kind of like uh, Misa Laika. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> Misa, like I listen, Star Wars Rebels yeah. cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they were obviously going for like the comedic element with him, and oh, I, I don't think it worked. I mean, it's fine. Like, I, I, I understand that you know, originally that they wanted Star Wars to have a broader appeal and be endearing to children and, and adults alike, but Jar Jar Binks is just like he's so useless. Like, he's more useless than Luke Skywalker, and that's saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest Luke was a bit of a Harry Potter for his time it's like it wasn't Luke that was the man it was everybody around him and I know people, some purists are going to get mad at me about that but 
Like, he wasn't really the man. Everybody else made him look good. He's a Gungan. That's what it was. Gungan. A Gungan. That's such Gungan. a cool cool name for a, a weird aberration. <laughs> yeah, I did not like the Gungans. Uh, is this, wait, you don't like the Gungans or, just Jar, or is it Jar Jar? Uh, more, uh, mainly just Jar Jar. <laughs> like, the, uh, the, Gung uh, the Gungans are okay, I suppose. But they're really tainted by Jar Jar. Now, I gotta say, you're gonna probably hate me for this, but he's growing onto me a little bit on Star Wars Rebels cast. Jar Jar is? Yeah, just a bit. Uh, Star Wars Rebels. Star Wars Rebels. Where's Star Wars Rebel cast? My goodness. Oh, it's is he in? Uh, I have. I will. I will be up front. I have never watched Rebels, so I do not know that Jar Jar is in it. So does yeah. he die in it? Um, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, no. Not the Star Wars Rebels. And my goodness, Clone Wars. My. Oh, okay. Fair. Yeah, he's in Clone Wars. Yeah, different timelines. Yeah. Tell me why we would be That's... lovely. Yeah, tell me about it. I have seen some of Clone Wars. Um, the I remember the series they did a while back, the original kind of anime type one that they were billing it as the weird one. Yeah, that 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 was cool, but like it can't, it was so out of place. It, that that one's not uh, canon either, by the way. No, I know. Well, what is canon though? You know, like, that, <laughs> what that, the Clone Wars series that, is, like yeah, all well, six hmm. or seven seasons. We're we're actually rewatching them. You can join us. We're rewatching them in chronological order, little by little. We're still in like yeah, season Alan one. Yeah, telling me about that. Yeah, how the episodes aired in the wrong order and stuff like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Like the first episode is like two sixteen. Second episode is one sixteen. Then they have a theatrical release, which is like an hour and twenty minutes long. And then it's then it's season one in regular order. And then like late into season one is like episode season three episode. One. It's weird, dude. <laughs> mm, yeah <laughs> actually no i got it wrong because after the theatrical release it's, it's season three episode three season three episode two it's crazy dude it's all over the place <laughs> yeah I, I don't know what they were thinking but that's television for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> but no, that's, that's actually i'm actually really enjoying it going back to it now uh because now it's like with all the stuff going on with star wars the way they're kind of re kind of sort of rebooting the whole universe and it's making me want to go back to the original trilogy and the, the prequels and, you know, Star Wars Battlefront is getting me excited about it. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. all feeding into each other. I'm becoming quite a bit of a fanboy all over again. I feel young yeah. again, man. Do <laughs> I do I do want to rewatch the uh, the movies before I go and see Episode 7. The, uh, like just the to, original, yeah. Yeah, the, well, both, both trilogies to get back into it. Uh, and, uh, episode 1 is, is a tough watch, but aside from that, they're all good. <laughs> episode one really you think that's the worst one of the prequels oh by miles by about ten thousand million light years they blur for me so much that's how unremarkable they are for me <laughs> uh yeah i actually like watch episode them. two and episode three i thought was fantastic the episode two was that the one that had the pod racing no episode one's the pod racing episode two is the attack of the clones that's Attack of Clones, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. And then episode three, where is when Anakin suddenly becomes an emo kid for some reason. Yeah, but I, st I, I liked it all. You are the chosen one! All that. Oh, I'm just drunk. I think my, my biggest problem with the prequels is that they didn't make his... The downward spiral that he went into, that what drew him into the dark side, they didn't make it, make it clear enough. Like, it wasn't compelling enough to, to be believable. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I think they made it kind of too simple. Like, oh, Padme could die. I need to become bad so that I can prevent this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because the dark side. That's what people say. Like, the dark side. You know, you can rev you can control the power of life and death. You can bring people back to mm -hmm. life. But it just it just felt so it felt so forced. If you watch Clone Wars, it fills in that those gaps really well. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. So like. What I would say is, if you're going to watch the prequels, watch the prequels, and then watch Clone Wars, like, as, mm. as soon as possible. And then, I, I think I need to go back to the, the prequels, too, because, like, I'm going back to, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing blanks, and I'm like, wait, now that makes a little more sense. Like, mm. together, they're great, but, like, the prequels by themselves, not so great, but with Clone Wars movies, you appreciate everything a lot more.
and they do so mm. much better work with like uh, developing the characters, dude. Ah, oh, so good. <laughs> Plus R two D two and three CPO, so you know, yeah, yeah. Um, but b- b- back to the battlefront. Back to battlefront. I- I'm still curious about something. The twelve maps. Do you think they're gonna be shared throughout the different modes, or they're gonna be divvied up? You know what I mean. I I would think based on. Uh, based on my experience playing Battlefront games, that all the maps, for the most part, will be in all the modes. Um, now, the only one that makes me kind of not think that is the, uh, you know, the Fighter Squadron one. Right, right, yeah. So they might do something different with the. They might like chuck in three totally separate maps to that. So I want Deep Space. They better have Deep Space. Yeah, <laughs> I would like Deep Space as well, or like at least like a big, a big ship versus big ship type battle. You remember, like in the original Battlefront, yeah. uh, well, Battlefront Two, certainly had it where you had the you were on the either the uh, Star Destroyer or one of the big Rebel ships, and you would be in it. You would take off in an X wing or a Tie fighter or a Y wing or whatever, and you would fly to the ship, take out bits of it, and like take down the shields, and then you could go inside it, and you had to take out the core or the reactor, or whatever it was, and basically blow up the ship. And that was awesome like i would love to see that on like current gen graphics like how good would that be on oh dude that'd be so epic like i used to be a huge fan i mean i still am but uh i used to really be into like the wing commander series and one of my Mm, favorite things was like the i mean that game was ahead of its time especially uh, wing commander Mm. prophecy because do you see these massive like motherships and these battleships, and you're like this little fighter trying to survive all this crazy stuff going on. Oh, it's <laughs> so epic! Like, if they can make like recapture that with the Star Wars magic, I'm I'm mm-hmm. completely sold and, and completely in love. I mean, not that I'm not in, in love now, but like they'll seal the deal there. They'll put a ring on it. <laughs> do you know? I would uh, I'd really like. I'm sure they mentioned that they were going to do something where you would be able to fight in the trenches on the Death Star. I'm sure I read that somewhere, and I would love to see to see that again. Cause, uh, For you some play, reason, uh, I bet that's the DLC. <laughs> yeah, probably. Did you ever play uh, Star Wars Arcade? You know, that's one that I... Uh, did I play? I don't remember. Well, which one was that? Because they're all a blur. I, I remember playing like a weird... I remember playing some of the Clone Wars games. I remember playing a little bit of the Force Unleashed. And I remember playing like a Pod Racer game. But I don't remember their names uh, for crap. Oh, oh, Star- oh! And I played the uh, the Jedi Academy games too on the PC back in the days. Okay. Well, well, this one you played as you were in like an ex- essentially a ship, and uh, you got to fly around basically in in whatever mission it was. And there was one mission that you were you flying through the trenches on the Death Star and having to take out the turrets and the Tie Fighters and stuff that were flying around. It was absolutely amazing. I played it on the thirty two X, and it was brilliant. Like. <laughs> It was not a lot of games on the 32X, but that is one of the one of the good ones. Yeah, my cousin had the 32X. I skipped that, and I got a Sega CD. Actually, I think I skipped the Sega CD too, because I got it. I think I returned it, and then I ended up getting a Sega Saturn. Mm. Yeah, I never got um, I never got the uh, Sega CD either. I did get Saturn. Saturn's good. Yeah, the Saturn uh, was my. Th- Ooh, don't get me started. <laughs> but yeah, I remember. I remember. I think I saw my cousin playing the Star Wars arcade, and I was like, "This is pretty sweet." And then we played mm. the Doom Thirty Two X and all that stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Good concept. It's the same that they didn't uh, stick with it. Thirty Two X and the Sega CD. But you know what? You know, the, the Sega CD served a good purpose because it helped bring uh, disc media, optical media, to the, a wider audience. It helped push push it forward. Because if not, people would have mm. still been sticking to the cartridges. And good lord. That would have been terrible. Yeah, I'm glad we've gone away from that because you would never see the games that we've got now on cartridges. I mean, you would. Like it'd be super expensive, dude. Mm. Um, I, like I, over here in the states, when the N64 came out, Killer Instinct Gold came out at like a hundred dollars, and if you <laughs> account for inflation now, that means it was probably roughly a hundred and thirty, hundred and forty dollars back then. Yeah. That's crazy for one game. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> and I mean, you see games on like the, the 360 and that that were coming out with like four discs. You know, <laughs> yep. like, I'm, I mean, right now they're like at the cap on, on the Blu rays, basically. So you're talking like you're at like 50 gigs on a Blu ray. Yeah. That's about that's about as much as you can fit on, on those type of Blu rays. If they go much more than that, you're going to need to go to two. 
and then three, and then you're going up the same position. Digital is the way forward. Uh, that's one area where I'm going to agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, you play you play P, you play a lot of PC games, so you must you you must agree that it's much more convenient to just have your library and go, oh, I'll play that. Yes. And, okay, I'm done with that. I'll play that rather than having to go and find a desk and you know. Like I love Steam, but like at some point, no matter how many hard drives you have, you have to play musical chairs and start deleting stuff to make room for others. <laughs> so then, like you know, the convenience is that you don't have to like pop the disc out, pop the disc in, and. You know, you don't have to worry about this getting scratched. That part's true, right? Mm. Like, if this gets scratched, yep. it's kind of screwed. Unless you have a warranty, you can take it back to the store and get exchanged. Uh, yeah, the digital, you just re-download I, it, right? Well, it's not an issue for me because I, I work it. I work in a shop that has a disc cleaner, so I yeah, can there you go. take it to my work and clean it. <laughs> Grind it down. See, there you go. So it's a moot point yeah. there. The problem yeah. I have with it is that, like... The U.S. like you, you guys actually have better like uh, internet than we do. The in, mm. the the U.S. internet infrastructure is like number eight in the world, and <laughs> like we're so backward when it backwards when it comes to the internet. Like there's still ISPs that are charging uh, data usage fees. Uh, wow. I'm I'm in one of their so-called uh, test markets where they never stop testing. When we moved to, to this house. Uh, they did, my, my bills come out sometimes come up to upwards of two three hundred dollars with the with the data usage fees. So like every time I have to like uh, download a full game, or like uh, reinstall a game, it, it's brutal. Because like at forty sixty gigs at a at a time, no thank you. <laughs> Not to mention you gotta wait for it to finish downloading. Like and there's people and and I have good internet. I I feel bad for people to have terrible internet. Like people that. The only thing they have available in the area is satellite. Can you imagine? We're just not ready for like fully digital. So I'm ready for fully digital, except for the pricing. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's another thing too. Like a digital game should not cost the same as a physical copy. They should make it more attractive. Like, and you know what? I would rather pay a little bit more for a physical copy and get like instruction manuals, a little goodies in there. You know, and then they'll make it more attractive. Say, hey, what well, you can spend twenty dollars less or thirty dollars less, and get you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating for illustrative purposes, obviously. Mm. You know, greedy bastard not gonna go that that low, <laughs> but you know, and the digital copy is this much cheaper. All right, so now I have a choice. Do I want the little doodads? Is that important to me or no? And then they could do like limited print releases on a physical copy, save money, and then when they sell out, print more. That way, they're not mm. eating costs. You know, like they're not surplus floating around. You know what I mean? Yeah, like publishers know, like, I, I really, should know how to do this already. Yeah, do you know I really wanted to go like all digital when uh when the PS4 hit, but just when they announced the the prices for all the games you're talking, it's actually more most of the time than in the shops. You're like fifty four ninety nine for a, a new release game. And I'm like, no, I'm just not paying that. Like, I can order it on Amazon for forty pound. Yeah, the and, the physical if, copies depreciate. The physical copy, yeah. Yeah, and then once once I'm done with it, then I can sell it on. You know, if I buy the digital game, that's me. I'm that's I'm stuck with it for life, <laughs> or well until they switch the server off and I can never download it again. But <laughs> but I mean, I might I might only play the game for a month and then never play again. Well, the evolve uh, physical copy. I seen I've seen it for as little as fifteen to twenty dollars, mm. and in um. In the digital version, they put it back up to thirty nine ninety nine or something stupid, and <laughs> you know with physical you have you always have depreciation, you know. Yeah. That's why I think it should always be an option, um, and there's ways they can work it out. But anyway, I know we're getting to deep, deeper discussion than the scope <laughs> of Star Wars. Uh, that's a big thing for me though, and I, and I think you know that's another thing. Like, this game is gonna be massive because the be- yes, the beta I- was eleven gigs. Mm-hmm. But yeah. just three maps. <laughs> well, I mean, I think a lot of that is the assets and stuff like that. But you're you're talking it'll be it'll be a fifty gig game, fifty to sixty, because obviously it's online only, so you need to have internet anyway. So they can chuck on, the you can have your install plus they'll probably chuck on a fifteen to twenty gig patch day one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So brace yourself, folk. If you if you're like me at the paper uh, gigabyte. Get people to stop streaming, buy some DVDs cheaper. 
you have to pay per gigabyte? Wow, I, I could not do that. We pay uh, $10 per 50 gigabytes. So basically per game we install an extra $10 surcharge. It adds up a lot quicker yeah. than people think. People don't realize that. Like, And I, I, I have actually reported my ISP to the Better Business Bureau, which is one of like our advocacy groups out here. And the mm. FCC is a federal regulation, regulatory group. I, I've been going all out because it's, it's highway robbery. You know? Yeah, that is ridiculous, man. Like, I, I pay... Um, we pay like what eighty eighty pound a month, but that's for our internet and like TV package and phone line. God, man, and I need to move over there. I think. And I have, <laughs> and and our internet is unlimited. Uh, down a hundred meg down, and uh, what is it? It's like six up. So like the upload speed is garbage, but. It's not that bad because I I only ever upload podcasts, so they, it doesn't take very long to upload a podcast, a couple of minutes. But like my downspeed, I can download like an, a TV show episode in like a minute, probably even less than that if I get good uh, good seeds. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, you know, my ISP uh, they think it's still like 2005 when you know streaming technology was still kind of young. You know, mm, yeah. now, now like they, they're thinking people are just loading uh, like web pages and like netscape navigator <laughs> you know like connected to aol like really like get with the times <laughs> it's like so you know that, that's that's why i'm such a i'm even more of a cheap bastard now than ever because like you know i have to keep food on the table for my family every time i buy right. a game i have to think about it it's like at least a ten dollar surcharge on top of the game that i'm buying <laughs> that, that is in ridiculous like oh man I, I i'm glad that i don't have to deal with that <laughs> oh yeah it's crazy I, i've even had to like fight with the my family like you know my, my my son was like doing video chat with his friends and he just stay on video chat for like, hours at a time just derping about they're on xbox live and then they're on video chat so they can see each other drooling while they're playing the game like what are you <laughs> doing and you and i'm like do you know that uses like 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 i think it's like two gigs per hour four gigs if you do oh, high wow. quality so mm -hmm. if you like do the three hours like that's 12 gigs right there thanks <laughs> mm -hmm. that, just 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 like make them pay for it be like that would be that would be ten dollars please <laughs> i know right yeah, if since stop it then <laughs> well I, I, I start doing that kind of stuff like, well this is coming out of your allowance so well well, well mm -hmm. i guess you know no, no more into no more xbox live for you this week like why because <laughs> you used up all your internet allow allowment allowance you know it's yeah. like oh it's crazy <laughs> But, you know, that's why we're not ready for, you know, the fully digital stuff. And that yeah, kind of stuff, people, like, you know, I, I, I hope companies like EA and, you know, Activision and all the big ones are really, you know, fighting to help push the internet forward because it's going to help them be more profitable and it'll protect the consumers as well. Mm. You know, because if, 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 if anyone at any point, any of the big players say everything's going to be digital here on... You know, henceforth, you know, it'd be a bad move because everybody else will follow suit and then, like, people will be screwed. There's people that, there are people that all they could do is single player and offline stuff. They can't do online. Yeah. So they'd be screwed. Like, oh, well, um, I guess I'll, I'll go somewhere and download it on an external hard drive and then, you know, drive it over to my house in the woods, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, most people, most people that don't have the internet, though, wouldn't know how to do that. It, 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 exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> screwed either it's way, unless they have like yeah. a tech a tech savvy friend that lives in this in the big city, you know, a hundred yeah. miles out. <laughs> I'm still surprised at the amount of people that come in to my work and they're like, "Oh, uh, do you have this in stock?" And I'm like, "No, just go on our website and order it there." And they're like, "I don't have the internet." And I'm like, "Go to the library." And they're like, "Oh no, I can't do that." I'm like, it's free. In the library, just do it there. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and there's uh, people that are like don't like online. Like, there's people that do not do any wireless stuff. They um they don't have any Ethernet cables, telephone cables hooked up into their computers. They're completely offline. Like you know, they use the computer for like word processing. You know. <laughs> yep. No, you know, very I, basic I stuff. Think, well, I don't think these these people ever even have computers. They're like, yeah, I totally totally unplugged the. They are living about thirty or forty years ago. Well, like, like there's still like how, huge. There's even younger, like you think it's always the old people, but there's even young people that like 
you know, have like privacy concerns and worry like after all this NSA, John Snowden stuff and all that extra paranoia that's gone around because of that, people are like, T- you know, they can see you through your TV. You know, there's apps they can install so they can <laughs> listen to your to your phone calls even when you're not like, or they can listen to you even when you're not on a phone call and they can blah blah look at your pictures and blah 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 blah. I'm like, okay, well, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Do you know they can feel free to look at my pictures? I don't care. <laughs> like, that's what I say. I'm, I'm like, doing anything interesting, you know. <laughs> And that's what I say. Like, like the way I look at it is, if you have something, if you do something online, just expect that someone eventually is gonna see it, and you know, maybe yeah. don't do stuff that you don't want people to find out about. You yeah. Know? <laughs> you know, if you're into midget porn, then yeah, <laughs> someone's eventually gonna find out. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that. Like, those people just don't know how to use uh, incognito tabs. I think. <laughs> I mean, even that stuff is like I think that's a lot of that stuff is placebo. I mean, security is like yeah. never a hundred percent, right? It's like no, no. It, it what security does is that it uh deter it's a deterrent for the people that are more casual thieves and uh and and and, and criminals. But like the people that really <laughs> want to get something done, they're gonna get it done one way or another. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the way I look at it. So it's like eh, whatever, yeah, yeah. have fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, go, going back to to Battlefront, like you said, you said it's going to be massive. I think uh, the the beta definitely showed that nine million players on on the beta. That's crazy. That's, that's their lot. that's EA's best supposedly to date. And uh, like that's a good stress test for the servers as well. Like, um, you, I mean, I don't know if you played Battlefield Four, like when it originally came out, there were so many problems with it. Like the servers were all barked all over the place with so many glitches in it. And, well, that's the way I Battlefield mean, 3 was when it first came out. Do you remember Battlefield yeah. 3? I never played Battlefield 3 like when it first came out. I it was the it. same yeah. story. They repeated I, They repeated the same story mm. two two times in a row. Which, <laughs> within the same series, two flagship releases in the same series, they did the same exact thing. They did not anticipate that there was going to be such a server load. Really? Like, <laughs> like people are... Like, again, I know there's some weirdos out there that could play the campaign, and that's all they really care for, about, or that's what they're looking forward to the most, but it's mainly a multiplayer franchise. That should be the thing you should be focusing on. Because <laughs> <sighs> Battlefield yeah, I mean, 3 was I, terrible, I, dude. You could... You, Battlefield yeah. 3, it, like, it, it would, like, take... Like some of the 20, 30 minutes of finding a match since it would boot you out randomly. It would break your squad up. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> That's why sometimes I don't I don't really see the point in pre-ordering because you to me like the the one benefit if it's any benefit in pre-ordering to the consumer the benefit to the consumer is that you can get get home and play it right away. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know it, it, it's a, it defeats the purpose. The, the one, yeah. The the one reason why I do pre-order games and like I only pre-order on on Amazon. I don't go into a shop and pre-order like I. I don't like this whole idea of like, oh, you pay five pounds and you reserve the copy of the game. It, it, there's, there's not going to be no shortage of games like uh, Battlefront, for example. Maybe if you're buying like J Stars Victory Plus in the first day or something like that, <laughs> and you want to buy it on in the shop and have it in your hand, then okay, maybe you should maybe you pre-order that in 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 the shop so you're guaranteed to get a copy because they'll probably only get two copies. Yeah, and the one of the employees will will get it, at least one of them. So you're for games like that, yeah, okay, like I understand pre-ordering those. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you could still pre-order on Amazon and have it delivered to your door on day one. So, you know. But the only reason that I actually do pre-orders is to lock in prices. Because when a, when a game gets announced, if I have any interest in it, what I do is I pre-order on Amazon. And then when it's coming up to, like, a week before release, I'll look at the price. Because during that time, I will get the lowest price that it's been, like, during the time it's been announced and when it's coming out. So... Because of the way Amazon works, you get the lowest price. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes like they've hit a pricing, like a wee pricing error, like a price dip during that time period, and you'll end up getting it for like thirty pound or like thirty to thirty five pound, which is great. And like there's some games where I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't quite buy that for forty five pound, which is usually like what they are when they're coming up to release. But for like thirty thirty five, yeah, hundred percent, I'm in. <laughs> That like extra ten pound saving is, like, uh, that's uh, that's like a couple of meals for me, you know. <laughs> I, I might I might start doing that then, cause uh, I mean I, I like I've done that with other things. I put something in my cart and then it'll email me when like the price changes, mm. and then I'd be like, ah, I'm gonna take it now, cause it's, it's cheaper than it ever been, 
you know. Mm. But I haven't really done that too much with the pre-ordering thing. I mean, pre-ordering is good for the companies because then they they invest more into it. You know, in theory, they invest more into it. They ha- they give the shirt a bit more supply. Blah 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 blah. But for the consumer, it's usually not a good deal because you usually pay them the highest price, and then shortly after, there might be a huge price drop. You know. <laughs> mm. That that is the case if you pre-order in store, yeah. But like Amazon is very good for it, and like you don't have to pay any money to pre-order from Amazon, and you can cancel it anytime before the money comes out of your account, like with no questions. You just go, "Oh, cancel." And they're like, "Why are you canceling?" And you're like, "Yeah, nah, just, I don't want it." <laughs> yeah, that is a good that, that is a good point. Yeah, I, I, I am gonna be getting it through Amazon because I, I it's, so, it's Amazon's just so convenient, and I have Prime, so it gets to my door so quickly. And now they deliver on Sundays too, which is unheard of here in the states, because uh, <laughs> post doesn't run on, on on Sundays. But now it does uh, apparently. Same here, man. Yeah, I, that's the same here. Like they've they've been doing that as well. I think they've only been trialing it here though. But yeah, uh, that's that isn't is that weird though? On Sundays. Yeah, I, I have had um, like when I was building my PC, like uh, I did get a couple of components delivered on Sundays. And, like, I didn't expect it. Like, it's like, oh, delivery estimate is Monday. And then, like, I come home from work on a Sunday, and my wife's like, oh, these packages came for you. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm coming on a Sunday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You're the parts. laughs> yeah, that's it's, it's pretty pretty darn cool. Uh, though it could be a bad thing, because if you're not ready for it, and then no one's home, sometimes they'll do something derpy, like leave it at the door. And I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> yeah, the, my, my postman tackle doesn't do that. It, it always gets given to one of my neighbors. Ah, see, that's good. Responsible. Here in the state, yes. not so much. <laughs> they don't do that. No, no, no. But uh, what else do we want to talk about uh, with with Battlefront? There was some other stuff. We talked about the DLC stuff. Uh, the people are really bitter about fifty dollar map pack, season pass, blah blah blah. Um, yeah, doing a, a free DLC pack when uh, episode seven releases, uh, the Battle of Jakku. But I said, isn't that one of the pre order perks? I th- I think it is a pre order perk, yeah, but like I say, I pre ordered it, so. Yeah, I need to I need to stop being a bum and pre order it myself. <laughs> I mean, I'm sold on it, but it's like I'm just looking at all the stuff I need to do, buy parts yeah, yeah. and stuff, and pay bills, and I'm like, mm, should I really do this right now? Because if mm-hmm. I do that, I might buy another game. It's slippery slope, man. You know, because then I'll get Rainbow mm-hmm. Six Siege, and I get something else, and then it'll be a humble bundle, and then it'll be something on Steam. It's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Humble Bundle this week is quite tempting, the Capcom one. I heard about that. I, they had a, a Namco Bandai one a, a while back. I got that one. That was really good. What does the Capcom yeah, one have had, in it? Uh, yeah, the Capcom one's got like uh, Street Fighter and there's a couple of Resident Evil games and stuff in it. Hmm. I don't think... Uh, I, I won't get the top tier one because I'm not interested in Street Fighter. Like, I, I'm certainly not for playing on, on my PC, on my own anyway. Like, it's, it's something I might play it. I might play on the couch, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play that on PC. But like Resident Evil games, bunch of them for like what is it? It's like eight dollars or something like that to beat the average. Yeah, that's. I'm into that. Yeah, what's the top tier at right now? Like twenty, thirty bucks. Um, I think it's like fifteen dollars. So yeah, about twenty bucks out for us, more or less. Yeah, that's not bad. Hmm. Yeah, although right, I'm just looking at my uh, my Star Wars Battlefront uh, pre-order. I pre- I ordered this on the 29th of September 2014. Right, <laughs> the lowest price has been since then is 41.99 uh, pounds, which it's, is not low. <laughs> which is usually 40. It's usually 45, right? Yeah, 45. Like uh, I think it was probably like 45 just now. Did, uh, 40, is it 45.99 40. or just 45 flat? Uh, forty three ninety nine. It is just now forty three ninety nine. So I was wondering. That so always... I'm going to say I'm going to I'm going to save two pounds by pre ordering it a year early. <laughs> I was like the ninety nine no, thing, like ninety nine cents. In, in, <laughs> no, no. In, in so in that in that instance, my uh, pre order scheme has not saved me very much money. But you know, <laughs> like I do have. There are some other games that I've got pre ordered. Like I've got Kingdom Hearts. That's it's sitting at thirty nine. Kingdom Hearts three, and uh, Final Fantasy fifteen thirty nine as well. I should do it with Rainbow Six Siege because I bet you that's one of those games that people are really split on, and it's mm. gonna probably experience a dip because like Star, something like Star Wars, Star Wars Battlefront, it's just like Halo. These are like huge releases that have a, a huge following, so like there probably won't be much of a, of a price drop because there's a lot of demand. You know that? You know what I mean? Yep. So, 
Like, like probably more obscure stuff. Yeah, that probably work out better. I'm trying to think would be obscure. Like even the like one of the games I'm really anticipating is the Division next year. Yeah, I'm I'm not into that, man. I'm not gonna get that one. Yeah, Ubisoft. Uh, uh, I I'm know. Mm. Ubisoft has done some dirty stuff, but it, the game's such a cool concept. It's a tactical shooter, and then it's apocalyptic, an apocalyptic setting, and you gotta like. There's a lot of looting involved. It's like Borderlands meets, you know, like a zombie apocalypse. You know, it's got a little bit of, you know, it's got like the Rainbow Six Ghost Recon flavor in there. Ah, I don't know. That's right up my <laughs> alley, man. I like I like tactical shooters. Like Battlefront's one of the rare exceptions that where it's more arcade style. Mm, yep. But you know, it's it's fun. Like, that, that that'll be what I play when I want something fast paced. Like you know, unlike see, and again, back to the reskin thing. Like it's not a battlefield reskin because battlefield you have to find the action. In battlefield, the action finds you, dude. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like I mean, in battlefield, almost every single game in battlefield, your my strategy is you get to the where the action is as quick as possible. So if there's like when you die, if there's a like a jet open, you hop in the jet and you fly to the action. You either you jump your jet, yeah, you jump out the jet and let it crash into something. Like, that's what I do. I do not fly around in the plane. I use the plane to get to where the fighting is. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and same with helicopters or, like, if there's none of those available, a tank or, like, a, a Jeep or a Humvee or whatever. And there are always, like, open vehicles sitting at the, sp the main spawn point for each sort of each faction in, in Battlefield. That's not the case at all in, in Battlefront. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be the case in any of the modes either. No, it doesn't look like it. Like they're the uh, the vehicles are like a kind of a, what what would you say like a power up basically that you pick up randomly on the map, and then you sort of you find the power up, and then you have to activate it, and then yeah. you go and fly about, which is which is quite cool. It's yeah, very, it's it's, it's, it's more it's more for like providing support rather than getting around, you know. Because mm -hmm. like uh, the was it the air speeder has the ability to tow the the walkers. Yeah, yeah, you do the the leg takedown. Yeah, and that's really cool. And then like uh, you have you have the you have the A wing, you have the Y wing, uh, the X wing, you have the Tie fighters. There's a lot of vehicles. Then you have the ATSTs, the ATATs. You could you could uh, man all of these vehicles. I'm missing a few others. Yep. There's a there's a land speeder too, wasn't there? Yeah, I didn't get a shot in the in the land speeder. I think the like I only tried the a couple of the Tie Fighters and the X Wing and the ATST, the the Chicken Walker. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that one. I, I really liked being in that though. That was I thought it was really well done. Yeah, like, I didn't get to go in the in the the big guy, the ATAT. But the ATST and the AT AT are so slow. Do you know the, the ST is not that bad? Like <laughs> it, it, it's a wee bit slower, obviously, than a, uh, zipping around in an X wing or whatever. But it's got good uh, weapon capabilities. Yeah, like, you can yeah. Kill a lot of fucking guys once you get in one of those. Because you got the you got the two um, secondary attacks, and then you got your like a machine gun. Oh, it's fun. Mm, yep. Yep. Nah, yeah, nah, they, they got there's so much variety. Like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, if this is just a tip, the tip of the iceberg, then this beta should get people encouraged. Like, there's there's gonna be a lot of replay value, a lot of content there. Um, you know, the only thing I worry about, like you said, twelve maps. I just hope that those twelve maps are like represented in all the different modes because I did mm. get a little scared. Like, they didn't show enough of like the the missions area. Like, uh, if you played the survival mode, I think it only lets you play up to wave five. And I hope it's not mm -hmm. where it ends. I hope it goes past that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was go I was going to say this. Um, I think I was gonna actually going to say this in 42 last night. I forgot. But, yeah, the um, with the maps, right, this is what they do with Battlefield. You've got, like, the map. Say you've got the Hoth map, right? And it's a big, giant map uh, for that Walker Assault mode. Now... If in some of the other modes they might be like slightly more uh, condensed down, so like the more close combat type thing. So they'll take a certain section of that map and close off the rest, like put like invisible barriers or whatever up around it. And this is what they do in uh, in Battlefield because you've got your main like big conquest mode. Where you've got all the vehicles and you've got like sixty four players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 
that's on that's on the biggest size of the map and then you can go down to like smaller scale battles where there's no vehicles and it's just like say it's like 8v8 or 16v16 or something like that and those ones are more kind of closed off and they're just in a, like a smaller section of one of those maps so i think they'll probably do something like that for the different modes like see that see that hero mode for example that will be that will be a much smaller map because there's only going to be eight players in that one yeah now that you mention that too i wonder if they're so you said eight players it'd be like 4v4 uh, no, I think oh, it's seven v one. Yeah, that's right. Cause they, they, it's like a juggernaut mode. They have to kill the hero, and then the person that yep. kills the hero becomes the hero next. Yeah. Um, and then drop zone was sixteen players total. Mm -hmm. Walker up forty. That's probably gonna be the de facto mode there. But uh, yeah. I wonder what's gonna be the equivalent of what was that mode in Battlefield? I think it's Rush, where like you have to like it. It, it, it does what you what you said, where it segments the the massive map. It's a little mm -hmm. areas, and then as you complete each area, it, it opens up a new area, and you move on to that area to fight. You know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's a cool way. If they, if they do that, like where they had these massive maps, and then they just repurposed them, that'd be great. Because I, I would love to see more of Hoth from, like, different gameplay perspectives, too, you know, not just Walker Assault. Yeah, definitely to see uh, what sort of different approaches you could take to it. But that, that map was brilliant, like, absolutely perfect. Like, imagine Hoth with... Doing the fighter squadron, that'd be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm so excited, man. And I might have to do. <laughs> I might have to take up the anti strategy of uh, pre-ordering through Amazon and playing the price game. <laughs> but I don't think this is gonna yeah, go well, down much. Uh... <laughs> no, I don't think it is. Not certainly not now. Well, I mean, if you uh, like from my strategy on that, it's gone down two pounds <laughs> in the time it's been. Uh, the well, we got a little over thirty days before it releases, right? Yes. Maybe it'll be yes. some negative publicity. 19th. Is this? Oh, I thought it was the 17th, wasn't it? 19th year. It's 19th year. Oh, okay, Maybe okay. 17th for you, yeah. Oh, that sucks. Well, I thought it was the same day worldwide. That's what it says for me, anyway, arriving 19th of November. Hmm. Maybe I might which have the dates mixed up. Which is a Thursday, which is a really weird day to, uh, to have a game release. Yeah, because usually they fall, like, on uh, Tuesdays. I'm used to. Tuesdays or Fridays, usually. Tuesdays or Fridays, for... yeah. Mm -hmm. That is kind of a weird day. But what would, why would they pick a Thursday? Is the movie coming out on a, on a Thursday, maybe? Well, it's December the movie comes out, so it's like... This comes out weeks before it. Yeah, it's uh, 17th for you. 19th for us, for some reason. Interesting. Hmm. Very Interesting. But I think uh, you can still play it earlier if you have EA Access. One week earlier. Yeah, if you if you have an Xbox One, yeah, you can play it week early. For free as well, which is cool. Mm. Which uh, I'll, but I'll, not, I'll not be doing that because I won't have my Xbox One by then. And I'm, I'm going to get Battlefront on the PS4 anyway, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. 